Garnett insinuated LeBron left Cleveland in 2010 because the Celtics eliminated the Cavs from the playoffs. KG added, we didn't give an expletive about LeBron and they had no fear of him. Now, Stephen A., based on these comments and everything that Kevin Garnett said, should opponents have some level of respect for LeBron? Well, I, I, and, I, and I'm not saying this about you, Rachel, because I understand we're introducing the topic the way that we are. But I think that that question, if asked in general with sincerity, is utterly ridiculous. Uh, the man's a three-time champion. He's been to the finals nine times. Uh, he's unquestionably one of the greatest players in the history of basketball. If LeBron James doesn't require respect, I don't know who the hell does, to be quite honest with you. Uh, that's number one. But number two, I'm going to say this. Um, I don't have a problem with anything that Kevin Garnett said in terms of what he means. He is alluding to basketball. He is alluding to two years earlier, the Boston Celtics winning the chip, beating the Lakers in six games. And then with that starting five of him, with Kendrick Perkins, with Ray Allen, Paul Pierce, and Rondo, when healthy, their mentality was, we're unbeatable. Anybody that's taken us out, it's because we were compromised. Our starting five was compromised injury-wise. But what I do think it's important to mention, and I'm not getting into any details, and I never will. All I'm going to say is what I've told, what I've said repeatedly, Max, and that is this. There were personal issues going on with LeBron James mm -hmm. and his teammates. He was disrespected. And he was flat out betrayed. And I don't give a damn what anybody says. He probably will never speak about it. Some people going to call me, lie, whatever. I don't give a damn. I'm telling you what I know. He was betrayed by, his, by some of his teammates in that Cleveland organization. And that played a role into why he left Cleveland to go to Miami. And that person that was accused of quitting once he decided to go to Miami by Dan Gilbert, who not only accused LeBron of quitting, but he picked the games in which LeBron James quit. Said two, four, game two, four, and six. He accused him of quitting all three games. That was disingenuous on his part. There were a lot of things going on with LeBron James that's none of anybody's damn business. And I will come to his defense to the grave on that one. What happened yeah. to him... That last year in Cleveland was nothing short of betrayal. It had nothing to do with basketball, but it also compromised his greatness on the basketball court because he was distracted, which is why when he went to Miami the next year, every single press conference, Dwayne Wade was sitting by his side because he finally had a brother that he had never had in all well, his years think, in Cleveland. Yeah. That is the truth. I think that's a very good point. I, I, the answer is you can't have too much respect for anyone who you play. You have to think that you're better than them in order to win. But I want to get into what you're saying, Stephen because sure. I find that more interesting. Uh, it's widely known what you're talking about, but we can't really talk about it. Um, I, it's inappropriate on television, I think. Um, that was absurd, what he had to deal with that year. That's absurd. And, no, and it's just like, it's ridiculous. If you had to invent something to bother someone that you don't do it to a teammate, that's what happened to him. But anyway, um, let's get past that for a second and just deal with what KG said. KG, Paul, I love Kevin Garnett. I love Garnett. I mean, Bill Russell loved so it when I. they got Kevin Garnett, right? And they won a championship. But guys, it was a one single championship. And Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, and Ray Allen were three Hall of Famers who were still great playing on the same team at the same time with a great coach and a great supporting cast, and it took everything they had to knock a one-man band out of town. I mean, like, really what happened is LeBron was by himself. If they, like, really what happened is he didn't have another great teammate, not even one. Give him an all-star to work with. When he, once he went to Miami... He, he choked. He choked the first one away. He was figuring it out. And, and then he won two in a row and went to, he altogether went to four straight finals and went back to Cleveland and won another one. I mean, he just didn't have, no one, no one, no one can do it by themselves. 
So he rigged the system. He did not as bad as, as, as KD did later on. That was even worse. But he did. He made sure. Oh, oh, really? So Garnett talking about they broke him. No, they didn't break him. They did this. They did that. It was experience. He didn't understand. My man, you give LeBron James two all-star teammates on that Cleveland team, let alone two future Hall of Famers, the Celtics would have exactly zero, zero. He was so much better than, than like, it took three of them. It took three of them to take him out. So, like, and I love KGs an all-time great, but that tells you the level, even then, that LeBron was operating on Stephen A. Um, it does point out KG's attitude that that is significant. You can't be so respectful of a guy that you don't think you're better than him. And KG is here, even though I, I disagree with what he's saying, he's showing the right kind of mental approach to playing a guy like LeBron. What, what, he is showing the right kind of mental approach, but let's, let, let's also understand and respect the fact that he's coming, and I mean this affectionately, he's coming across as a bully on the block because no one thought Cleveland was better than Boston. Shaquille O'Neal was beyond his pride, prime. Uh, Anthony Miller was on the squad. Mo Williams, Antoine Jameson. They did not have the crew that the Boston Celtics had. The Boston Celtics had, it was two years removed from winning a championship. When their starting five was healthy, they were unbeatable. Everybody pretty much knew that. And so they clearly had the better team. It wasn't like, oh, my goodness, LeBron had a crew. No. Right. LeBron was a one-man wrecking crew at that particular moment in time. And no one-man wrecking crew was going to beat KG with Paul Pierce and Ray Allen. And those exactly. Boys. That was not going to Give happen. Give him Shaq but even from three years effort. before then, yeah. Stephen A. Like, if you That's just right. made different Shaq game. two or three yeah. years younger, completely different scenario. Yeah. That's not fair. To, but, but, but So I agree. Like, right. But KG, like, the, if the question is, do you, do you have to respect LeBron? If what KG's point of view is is disrespectful, then you got to be disrespectful. You well, got to think that you're the bully. And KG felt like that when he was out on the court. Easy to, easier to do when you have Hall of Famers backing you up. And LeBron didn't have that. But still, I think there's a lesson there. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.